My piano used to be next to the kitchen when I was a kid. I remember resenting the crackling sounds of stir fries, the pungent smells of black beans and garlic. They always put a greasy Chinese taint on my Chopin or Beethoven. Now that I spend more time shopping for winter mushrooms and bok choy than sitting on the piano bench, I've been wondering about other people who live with the same sounds and smells. The little old lady with the jade bangles and her six layers of clothing. The mother with the oversized sunglasses and Gucci purse, whose kids would only answer her in English. And the teenager in L. L. Bean gear, showing her college roommate what minced dihorn looks like. I wonder if I could take a closer look. What would they say if I asked them if I could follow them home? While we were waiting for the walk to get red hot, Jenny asked me about my mom, my mom's mom, and whether I had any sisters. She said that it must be like prison for my mom to move from Hong Kong to the middle of Ohio, not speaking the language and all. My mom actually used to be an English teacher, but it moved me that Jenny just assumed she didn't speak English either. Don't be polite, the fish is very fresh. Between Tina and her mom, they speak Taisanese, a dialect I don't understand and only hear once a year when my mom's distant relatives call us on Christmas Day. Between Tina and me, she likes practicing the English she's learned in only three and a half years, a skill that her mom, who works seven days a week in Chinatown, hasn't had the time to learn. Among the three of us, we speak Cantonese. <laughs> Tina is applying to Boston Latin, and Jenny has her heart set on an Ivy League college for Tina at some point in her future. Will Tina one day be reluctant to ask her mom to a parents' night or to pick her up at a friend's house? A mom who can't chat casually about the latest Hollywood blockbuster or the Clinton house plan. Mm -hmm. 
Tina's a year younger than I when I first came to the States, and she speaks much better English than I did at the time. Somehow I can't imagine her not talking to anyone at school for days, or getting stomach cramps when being called upon in class, or locking herself in the bathroom at school, hiding from classmates who aim imaginary machine guns at her, classmates who swear to kill all communist Chinese. Jenny's really proud that Tina's won a couple karaoke awards. Hey, why don't you sing Laurie that song, Sunset Guy? Mrs. Bao was asked on a blind date by Mr. Bao, who'd been tipped by a classmate that, quote, a couple of good-looking airline girls from Hong Kong are in town. And apparently, he's convinced her to stay for another 25 years. As usual, I was asked what elementary school I went to in Hong Kong, and it turned out to be one of the main rivals of the school Mrs. Bao went to. Yes, I, I do both northern food and Cantonese food and anything that is easy to prepare that doesn't require too high a Her school is famous for teaching English and not having boys. Mine simply for overall excellence. Is this a great greenhouse? Yes. Yeah. This is one of the nicest greenhouses you've ever seen, isn't it? Yeah. Now, I don't know if it's going to work or not. Anyway, the strangest memory came back to me as she and I talked. One day in the fourth grade, I suffered an inferiority complex for not knowing how to say department store in English. And my cousin, who of course was a fellow fourth grader at Mrs. Bao's school, proudly taught me. That was no laughing matter since most kids in Hong Kong grew up bombarded by the message that the better English you speak, the more westernized you are, the more westernized, the more sophisticated, and the more sophisticated, the more money you have which is, of course, what everything in Hong Kong leads up to. Right. Yeah. This tablecloth, is your recorder on? Yeah. It's mean bargain at Teotihuacan. Those are the pyramids outside Mexico City with an Indian woman. And we bought this tablecloth. It's made from natural cactus fiber. Very rare. Master chicken is the <laughs> Mr. Bao said, we Americans can eat chicken the way you Chinese can. The Chinese have a special tongue that can spit out chicken and fish bones. Hey, Laurie, you didn't leave Hong Kong until you were 12, so you probably have a trained Chinese tongue. Kind of popular and has a famous Chinese dish. Everybody like to cook this. A lot of people like to serve this for, for guests because it looks good. Oh, that's true. 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 Oh,
They're comparing the Chinatowns in Boston and Japan. Taiwanese, this one, the Hong Kongese, this is, you know, many, many, yeah. many, many different Chinese. See, in this country, mm. usually when you go to Chinatown and you mm. speak English, they make you wait in line and they serve all those who speak Cantonese first. Oh, I see, Cantonese. Then those who speak Mandarin. And then lastly, mm. those who speak English. <laughs> if you speak English, you have to wait for an hour. Yeah. Uh, well, they do the same to me. If I speak in English, I'm going to ignore you. <laughs> but then I can speak some Chinese. So when I speak Chinese, oh, big smile when they serve you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but too late, too late. Too late. Too late. Mm -hmm. Try English. But his Chinese yeah. is very bad. It has no. an English accent. Mm. Yeah. So they, no. they like they it if he speaks really? some Chinese. <laughs> and they would just laugh because mm. he speaks funny Chinese. No. Mm. Lori, how's my Chinese? <laughs> I suddenly realize that all my aunts have that same laugh. All my aunts who are now in Toronto, Vancouver, Sydney, New York, and San Francisco. The man to my right was trying to say Fort Lauderdale at one point, but no one could understand him because of his accent. I tried to help him out, and Mr. Bao said, well, Laurie can't say the right either, because she's from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. grandfather. Mm -hmm. and mm. Yeah, wife. Grandmother. Mm -hmm. Where? Yeah, where? Oh, Rachel. Yeah. Paul is not okay. here. Oh. Your father um, is very sick. Good. He's still working. Mm. Your father. Mm. Mm. And no, 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 In the middle of this project, I read about Fluxus, a new dadist group in the 60s that explored urban space and its people. One of the artists hired a private investigator to follow herself. She wanted to find out what she could learn from a stranger's perception of her. I guess I'm hiring myself as my own private investigator. Xing is my age and also an art student. You might expect me to be able to communicate with her better than with the other women I've filmed. Well, the only thing is that we didn't quite speak each other's dialect. <laughs> Luckily, her friend Ocean, who gave himself that name when he came to the States for art school, was our emergency translator that night. Whenever my Mandarin failed me, since he speaks both Mandarin and Cantonese. She's from Taiwan, he's from China, and I'm from Hong Kong. Xiaolu. What do you mean by I don't understand. What's Lu Gia? Ocean came to the rescue. Super swordswoman. What? I was totally lost. I've met very few Chinese men who'd tell me about attempting to fly by jumping off trees and bridges. 
and swimming with dolphins. It's funny, <coughs> ocean makes me think of Daisy from The Great Gatsby. You know how she talks in a really low voice so that people are drawn to pay attention to her? Well, in a similar way, Ocean talks very slowly, as if really enjoying the act of talking, and that nothing's too trivial for him to linger over. I almost feel like I've committed blasphemy now that I've turned Fitzgerald's Golden Girl into a mustached painting student from China. <laughs> She needed no convincing at all. She only said, Oh, poor girl, asking strangers in a store if you could go home with them. Come, come with me. Call me Auntie Lai. Hello. The fact that she was moving out of her apartment that night didn't keep her from inviting me home. It's like I was a straight cat she found on the street that needed to be fed. Just like the neighbor's baby. And her grandchildren. Hey, man. Somehow I felt like I was in a tribe or something, that it was perfectly natural for them to have an extra person sharing their dinner with them, whether it's a neighbor's baby or a stranger who approached them in a grocery store, as long as we spoke the same language. It was an incredible and ordinary feast.